This is the ADR2 combi system, bread and rolls. To turn the system on, you need to press the start button here. What that does is that turns on the divider and the overhead proofer. The overhead proofer runs with the divider. To stop the machine, press the stop button, both units stop. So in normal operation, you turn the divider on, the proofer is running. On this side over here, at this point with the divider running, you're not scaling any dough. Even if you had dough in the hopper, it wouldn't be scaling now. This control over here turns on the scaling, this valve right here. By turning this valve clockwise, just to look close, this doesn't have to be hard, that turns on the scaling and now you'll be cutting dough pieces. To turn off the scaling, just simply loosen it. No, no reason to turn it hard either way. So, we turn it on, we're scaling dough. Now we need to check the weight of the dough pieces. You would physically take a dough ball off of the belt, put it on a scale, and weigh it to see what it weighs. There is no, no weight, uh, no scale on the machine. You have to use an external scale to do it. To control the weight, this is the control up here to control the weight. There's a little sign here. If you turn this handle counterclockwise, it opens up the chamber, you get more weight. Turn it count, uh, clockwise, the pieces will get smaller. It reduces the volume in the chamber. Right? Every time you make an adjustment, you have to check your weight. There are some little indicator lines on here, and that's all they are is indicators, just to give you a reference. So you know when you run your three ounce rolls, I usually put it on the fourth mark or the fifth mark, and that's a good place to start. So then you can come and take your dough ball, put it on the scale and weigh it, you should be close. So you don't have to go that far. Now, while the machine is running, you have an oil reservoir here, which feeds oil to the two moving parts here, the one that's going up and down the back pocket, and one you can't see underneath here, the one that goes horizontally in the machine. These valves turn on the oil flow to those components. While you're running dough and scaling, those valves should be on. When you're done scaling or you have no dough or you shut the machine off for any reason, you have to turn them off because it's just a gravity feed system and you're, you're gonna keep on pouring oil into the machine. So very important, turn them off when they're not in use, when you're not scaling. The dough pieces will be coming out on the belt here. When you run rolls, you'll be running rolls at two across. There's a lever here. There's two indicators, up for rolls, down for bread. So we're in the up position. That's where it would be for rolls. If you're running bread, you would lower that down. Right? But for rolls, it's in the up position. The rolls will actually flip over as they come off of there. Flour duster here is mainly for this belt to keep flour on it because as the pieces go through the machine, they're gonna to wanna to stick. So that flour duster provides flour for this belt. The pieces will come onto here. Then you have this flour duster. By pushing in this, you engage this flour duster. Now you're putting flour on the dough piece and getting flour into the proofer so that the dough pieces don't stick in the cups. You only need as much flour as the dough requires so it doesn't stick. You have a sticky dough, you know you're gonna to need to use more flour. You can control the flour with this. You slide this back and forth, you can increase or decrease the flow. And this lever pulls it out, turn it off. Yeah, this, this lever here controls how much flour, this one on or off. It's off right now. Push it in, it's on. Right. The dough pieces will go into the proofer. 
as rolls would go in two across, the rolls would go around this proofer one time, then they tip over at the top. The two rolls that were in the end two pockets are now transferred over to the middle two pockets, leaving the end two open to be reloaded again. When you run rolls, they'll actually go around, there's six pockets, so they'll go around this proofer three times. When you run bread, you scale bread at one across, it'll actually go around six times because bread all moves across once, and that's what this control is for. Bread out, rolls in. When you run rolls, that's in. Bread, it's out. Now that you're running into the proofer and you have your weights right and everything's going in, you come to this side of the machine, the outlet side. Up here, there is a control for bread and rolls as well. Rolls for two across. When you're running bread at one across, you need to switch it to the bread side. Rolls over here. You need to decide whether you're going to the stamper or to the sheeter. This piece of equipment right here is the stamper or Kaiser roll machine. This one to my right is the molder for uh, hoagie rolls, French breads, hamburger buns, hot dog rolls, that kind of stuff. This control here determines where the pieces go. When it's in the up position to stamper, the pieces will fall through the chutes to the stamper. When it switches to sheeter, then the pieces will come out onto the belt and go over to the sheeter or molder, whichever you prefer. Roll it forward. And you can lift these off. Then you can pull it out of the way. These come off. And you can pull them out of the way. Same when you put them back on. Then roll it forward. Okay. Well, it is, it's made for mineral oil, but most people, it's actually ported down into the dyes so it can drip water on, oil on the dyes in case the dough is sticking to the dye. But when you use flour on the infeed, it's not normally used. Mostly what it does is make a mess. Nobody uses it. Usually just leave it taped closed and that's it. There is also a safety switch on this. In case these dies, this cover is open. This machine will not run. The switch is located here. Right? So this has to be up and closed so that the uh, for the machine to run. On the molder, there are two adjustments for the sheeting head. Top roller, bottom roller. They are adjusted with these handles on the side. To move the handle, the handle must be pulled out, then it can be rotated. And that's what moves the roller in and out, as you can see, if you look at the roller in the machine. Right. Right. Same with the bottom one, in and out. There are also indicators on there used as reference so you know for different products you can have a little list and write the numbers down so you know where to start. Okay. Here you have a curling chain which curls the product. The curling chain has three height adjustments. Normally it's down low for the smaller pieces because you need a little more pressure to start them to curl. Higher up for the bigger pieces because they're easier to curl. They're a thicker piece when they come out. You have side guides that can be adjusted in or out to determine the length of the piece. You have adjustments on the side for the pressure board so that you can control how hard you press the dough piece to get rid of the seam. Now normally when you come through the sheeter, you're looking for two and a half curls on the dough piece. When we run some dough, you'll see what that is. Two and a half curls 
is the proper amount of sheeting. The more you can sheet it without tearing the dough, the better it is. Right? Pressure board on the outlet end also has a height adjustment for pressure to control your length and how hard you press the dough to get rid of the seam in the dough. Also, side, same side guides determine the width of the piece, the length of the piece. The piece comes out on the tray and you collect it. Stamper has an off-on switch over here. Off is in the straight up position. Manual, the stamper runs all the time. No control over it, there's no automatic mode, it just runs. Has an automatic position in which there's a switch up in the proofer which is timed with it to turn it off and on, which is in your normal operation if you're running the machine. Right? To turn the machine off is the center position. The dies up here, the Kaiser dies are made to spin. You can see when we run, they turn to put the cut in the dough. If, in the future, you have another kind of roll, you want to make a split roll, a cross roll. Those dies can be removed and you can put in a split roll die or a straight roll die. Then what happens is this lever gets moved over to this position. Now, when the machine runs, the dies don't turn. So now you're just putting a straight cut in the piece. But I think this is all you have here now is the, the Kaiser dies. The speed of the whole machine is controlled with this lever here. Clockwise, the whole machine speeds up. Counterclockwise, the whole machine slows down. There is another speed control on this side of the machine. For the inner rounding unit, which is what, how the dough balls get rounded, you can increase or decrease the speed the same way on that. Clockwise is faster, yeah, counterclockwise is slower. Does the machine have to be running to turn it? It should be running. Should be running. Both, on both, both, controls. both controls should be running when you make your change. Changing the rounding drum. To change the rounding drum, you need to open the cover on the machine. This is the rounding drum or molding drum. In order to remove it, you have to take this cover plate off here. But first, you have to loosen the tension on the belt. The belt is too tight to remove it. To release tension, you put a little pressure on this handle and this button gets pushed down. That releases the belt and the belt is loose. This hand wheel, it's, it's on the bottom here, you'll see it. It has the threads, our left hand threads. So to loosen it, you turn it clockwise. All right. To take the drum off, the molding drum can come out, replaced with another one. There are different sized drums for different sized products. The bigger the product, the bigger the drum. No hot water to clean any of the plastic components on it. You can use lukewarm water, you can use a brush, you can put them in a the sink, you can do all of that, but no hot water. They will distort. And when you store them, they need to be stored this way as well. They can't be laid down on their side. Depending on how hot and humid it is in the area, the thinner ones especially, they can warp and go egg-shaped. They should be stored in that fashion, just like that. Inside here, this is the inner drum. This is the, what does the rounding. What happens is as the dough piece falls into the hole, the dough piece falls into this hole, it's trapped inside this hole. This drum actually moves in and out inside of here, and it gets pinched between the belt and this, and that's how you get your rounding. It's just, like, it's just like you're going like this here with a dough ball in your hand. That's how this thing works here. But that also comes off to be cleaned. Inside here, you remove this cover.
you have a tool bin in here with all of your tools that you need for taking anything apart on the machine. To take this drum off, these three nuts with the large washers on them are the ones that come off. You'll see it won't fit those other ones. These are the three that come off. Pull it out a little bit to loosen them up. Then the three washers come off. Then the inner drum can come off and can also be placed in the sink and it can be washed, especially no hot water on this because this has, it's not only riveted, it's glued. Hot water will loosen the glue and this cover will come off. At the same time, while we're inside the machine here, there is another adjustment inside the machine. They are chutes right here. They're just used to help guide the dope piece into the hole on the drum if necessary. There is an adjustment screw in the back which can be loosened so that they can be turned and angled, whatever you need. When you run bread, because the bread is so big, the chute can't be used. So it has to be taken out of the machine when you run bread. Same with the brush. This brush, its purpose is to keep the drum clean, just in case not every piece falls in the hole. It's there to keep it out so you don't ruin two if one gets ruined. And it also keeps the outside of the drum clean while it's running in there. This brush also has to come out when you use the bread drum because it's so big. You need to loosen this nut and then this will slide right off the front. To remove the brush, remove the nut, the brush slides off the end and also can be taken to the sink and cleaned. No hot water again, the bristles are glued in place. Right. You can see when you're putting it back in, it only fits one way. There's a slot there for it, and that fits onto a, a pin inside the machine, so it can't go on the wrong way. It can only go on one way. To reinstall it, put it back on, locks in place. If there's no buildup on this, then there's no reason to take it out. You know, you don't have to clean it if it's clean.